Hello, my name is Dan Oaks, and I'm pleased to announce the release of Cookin' version 14. Woohoo! You know, when Cookin' 14 was released earlier today, lots of people got this upgrade for free. And you can get it for free too, because everyone with an annual membership plan qualifies to get Cookin' 14 for free. Or if you have a monthly membership plan for five consecutive months, then you'll qualify also. So before I get going, I just want to mention that if you don't have an annual membership plan, then sign up today so you can get Cookin' version 14. Now, one of the first things you'll notice when Cookin' 14 launches is that it has a fresh, new, modern look and feel with white icons and a colorful toolbar. The flat icon style really makes Cookin' 14 feel more modern. And the text on the buttons on the toolbar actually makes it a lot easier to use because with text on the buttons, you can find exactly what you're looking for quickly. In fact, I find Cookin' 14 is a lot easier to use and a lot more fun too. Now, I don't have time to show you all the new features in Cookin' 14 today because there's so many. So today I'm just going to show you how to use the duplicate recipe finder because that's a cool new feature. Now what you do is you just click the search button on the toolbar here to bring up the advanced search screen. And I want to find recipes that have the exact same ingredients. Okay, that's it. That's the duplicate recipe finder. It's that easy. Now I'm logged into my wife Kathy's cooking cloud account and she has a lot of recipes. So I'm not going to search for these recipes in the entire cooking recipe database. I'm just going to search for them in this selected cookbook only. Kathy's maiden name is Dorch, and so, so this cookbook has all the Dorch family favorite recipes. If you have a lot of recipes and you do the entire Cook and Recipe database, that can take a while. In fact, earlier today I told Linda De Haven she has 94,000 recipes in her database. I said, you know what, start it before you go to bed tonight, let it work all night, and it'll be ready to go for you in the morning. But in this case, I'm just gonna search this one cookbook only. Okay, so I'm going to go down here and click the search button. And while we wait for it to search, I should mention that there are several reasons why it's important to remove duplicates from your database. For one thing, duplicate recipes take up extra space. The other reason is it can affect your usability of it. For example, if you type in what you have on hand, cooking will search your recipe database and tell you what can make, you can make for dinner, right? But if you have a lot of duplicates, then the same recipe is going to appear multiple times and it's going to clutter things up. The other reason though, and really the most important one, is because sometimes when you make a recipe for dinner, you might say, you know what, you might edit it. You might say, it had too much sugar. And so you might change the recipe. But later when you make it again, you might get the other one which doesn't have that edit. Right? Or you might add a food photo to a recipe that you make for dinner. And then later when you go to share your recipe with a friend, you might share the wrong one that doesn't have the food photo. So it's really best to just have one copy of each recipe in your database. Now, some people duplicate recipes on purpose. This customer, for example, Sandy, she says, I have a crab cake recipe that qualifies for appetizers, but it can also be done in the air fryer. So she has it in both the appetizers and air fryer cookbooks because she wants it in both places. So I understand what she wants here, right? But that's actually not ideal. What you really want to do is use the category feature in cooking, right? Just click categories right here and you can categorize recipes. I'll show you how to do that more later, okay? But really what you want is one copy of each recipe in your database and then you can categorize it as an appetizer. You can categorize that same recipe as an air fryer recipe and so forth. So let's take a look at what Kathy's got here. It looks like she's got quite a few duplicates in just this one cookbook. I'm going to collapse this section here so I can see these duplicates easier. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to collapse these views here because I don't need them right now. So I'm just going to click this minimize button right here and those go over here. When I want to get them back, it's easy. I just click restore and restore and I'm good to go. So sometimes people are like, oh, I'm afraid to do that. No, just click it, just minimize it. This gives me lots of room to work with here. I'm gonna open up this. I'm gonna double click on this first Caprice chicken recipe. And then that's gonna load the recipe here. I'm gonna go back to the advanced search screen. And now what I'm gonna do is right click on the second one and choose open in new tab. Now I've got the one open here and the other open here. And what I wanna do is I wanna see them side by side. So I'm gonna click on this one and just drag it over here when I see that bar in the middle of the screen, then I know I'm good, I'm gonna drop it. I'm just gonna let go. Okay, and on this side, I'm gonna click this one. Now I can see the two recipes side by side and I can compare them. So I see this one serves four people, four people serves four, 10 minutes, prep time photo, photo. Okay, the title, all this looks good. So I'm gonna collapse this section because if you've got a bigger screen, you may not need to do this, but in this little area that I have, I have limited space. So I'm gonna collapse the details now I can look at just the ingredients. In fact, I can collapse the directions too if you have a lot of ingredients. Now I can compare the ingredients side by side, really easy. And it looks to me like the ingredients are identical. 
so that's good. So I'm going to collapse the ingredients section and I'm going to click here to look at the directions. Now I see there's some differences in the directions and so I'm going to just you know compare the two and I'm going to fix up the one and I think I'm probably going to go with this one on the left. In fact while I'm at it I think I'm going to click this edit pull down menu insert and convert this to a numbered list because that's going to look a lot easier when I'm in the kitchen making this recipe it's going to be a lot easier to follow. So this is the one I'm going to go with and this one here is the one I'm going to delete. So what I'm going to do is click up here on details and I'm going to just type in here delete. I'm not going to bother with it right now. I'm just going to mark this one okay and click save. Now that recipe is done and it's good to go. Later what I'll do is I'll search this cookbook for the word delete in the title only and I'll have a big list of all the ones that are ready for deletion and I can actually delete them all in one file swoop. Okay so now I'm just going to close this. Okay and cooking opens back up. I'm going to go back to advanced search and I'm going to do this again with the next one. Cheesy potatoes. This one's spelled a little different right? So I'm going to double click on this. Oh yes, I'm going to save my changes. Okay, so I open up this recipe. I go back here and I open up this other cheesy potatoes by right-clicking it and choosing open a new tab. And now I drag this one over to here and drop it. And I click back here. Now I've got the two recipes side by side. I expand the details. And I can compare side by side. Okay, these look the same except for this one's not spelled right. So maybe I'm going to go with this one this time. Let's look at the directions next. So I'm leaning towards the one on the right. Or let's compare the ingredients next. Looks the same. Okay, that's good. So I'm going to collapse that. I'm going to look at the directions. And those look the same too. So it's mostly just a, uh, it's just a duplicate of the exact same recipe. It hasn't been changed at all. So I'm just going to mark this one as delete because it's spelled wrong. And then I'm going to click save and so forth. So with this advanced user interface in cooking, you can compare recipes side by side. It's really cool. You can collapse views and open views and expand views. And like I said, when I'm all done here, I'm going to go here and say, I want to search for recipes with the word deleted in the name only. And there it is. I've got two of them to delete. I can actually, what I'm going to do is expand these. I mean, I can shift click to select them and then I can right click and choose delete and I can delete all of them at once. Boom. You sure you want to delete these two recipes? Yes. So there we have it. Those are some tips on how to use the duplicate recipe finder feature in cooking 14. I hope you love it.